بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين The tanks were firing all the time. I went to get some water. If we had water, we wouldn't even leave the house. The tanks withdrew from this and some of the surrounding areas of Sheikh Radwan. People are able to leave their homes and are now on their way to getting some water. It is actually salt water that is coming out of a well and there's no desalination. It is now being used as drinking water. I'm feeding my children some fava beans. There's nothing else left. Where should we go? What can we do? We want our life back. We are suffering from water and food shortages. There is no sanitation and no shelter. We are displaced. We will not leave this land. We will remain here despite the occupation and its allies and all the countries supporting the occupation. We will remain in Palestine even if this means we are going to die. When Muslims were merely threatened, the tone of honor in the glorious past was من هارون أمير المؤمنين إلى نقفور كلب الروم قد قرأت كتابك يا ابن الكافرة والجواب ما تراه لا ما تسمعه From Harun al-Rashid to Nikfor The leader of the believers to Nikfor The Roman dog I read your letter He sent a letter The leader of the Romans Sent a letter to Harun threatening him Harun said I read your letter and the answer will be what you see, not what you hear, for merely a threat, not for a massacre and a genocide. Today, many of the Ummah, illa man rahim Allah, see the verses of jihad in the Quran, in the Sunnah, the verses of qital in the Quran, in the Sunnah, like some sisters see the verses of polygamy. The entire Ummah looks forward for fasting. They love fast in Ramadan. One of the biggest sha'air of Islam that Muslims look forward for. Preparation in happiness, in the positive change in the mood. It becomes very apparent anywhere you go. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kutiba alaykum usiyam. They look forward for it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kutiba alaykum usiyam. Fasting is ordained on you. The same one who said fasting is ordained on you said Kutiba alaykum al qital Jihad Jihad is ordained upon you You can't say Wallah I love fasting It's good So I'm going to take it And I'm going to believe in it And I'm going to practice it But qital and jihad No I don't believe in that Afatu'minuna bi ba'd al kitabi wa takfuruna bi ba'd the recent events exposed how the Jews of the Qibla want people enslaved to their rulers. They want to take people from being slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to being submissive slaves to their tawaheed. Their idea of tawheed when they say tawheed is to take people from the shirk of the graves which they keep repeating and correctly so because it can't be emphasized enough but they want to take you out of that shirk into the shirk of the palaces. Islam came to honor mankind by being the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they come to submit mankind to tawaqeet. The obedience to orders from Muslim rulers, Muslim rulers, is when they're Muslim and their commands are in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayuhu al-lazina amanu atiyu Allah wa atiyu al-rasul wa uli al-amri minkum. O you who believe, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obey the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and those who are in authority. Atiyu Allah, obey Allah. Wa atiyu al-rasul, obey the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa uli al-amri minkum. And those in authority. Atiyu was omitted when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَأُولِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ The term أَطِيعُ was omitted from وَأُولِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ Obedience to Muslim rulers 
is when they're obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The continuation of the verse stresses that. فَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ If you differ in a matter, refer to the rulers. If you differ in anything, refer to Allah and His Messenger if you believe in Allah and the Judgment Day. Let me tell you how filthy these degenerate Jews of the Qibla are. Them, their shuyukh and their leaders. After the U.S. invaded and occupied Iraq, just like the Zionists occupy Palestine, there's no difference. The U.S. Appoint, uh, uh, appointed Louis Paul Bremer as a leader in Iraq. They occupied the country, put him a leader there. Do you know there was some of the Jews of the Qibla who considered Louis Paul Bremer a leader you can't go against. They said you can't fight without the Imam's permission. Talking about the situation there. They issued fatwas that America was there to liberate and not to occupy. And they said that you should not rebel against the leader. Their wali al-amr is Bremer. That's not random. The head figure of theirs who said it back then was back then among the most popular shuyukh of the Jews of the Qibla. He was on their media day and night and he was one of the closest advisors to their leaders back then. It was mentioned in their media and over the pulpits over and over. You know one of the most prominent heads of the Murji'a rejects in Jordan was asked in 2015 about the situation in Palestine. And he said, you can't fight Jewish settlers because they provide you with gas, electricity, and give you jobs. Someone said to him, what about, Sheikh, what about, what about the Jewish so soldiers with weapons? He said the same. Provide you with gas, electricity, and give you jobs. You see why I tell you they're rejects? You see why I label them with that? When the war in Afghanistan was blessed by America against the Soviets in the 80s and 90s, the fatwas supporting jihad were pouring in like rain. The khutab were inspiring people to go to jihad. The money was openly collected for jihad and mujahideen. Used to go to any airline, any Saudi Airlines branch. Say, I'm going to Pakistan to go fight in Afghanistan. They say half the ticket is off. The ones who returned to visit their families were heroes because America blessed it. When it's not blessed by America, the fatwa is its fitna, stay away. Their khawarij to scare the ummah from them. The examples of their betrayal are many. Now let's fast forward a little bit. There's a genocide ongoing in Palestine, but it's not new. It's been going on for 80 years. It's not two months old. The Muslims in Palestine have been facing constant genocides for the past 80 years. Shootings, killings, bombings, raping. In the recent years alone, just take Gaza by itself. Gaza alone hasn't recovered from back-to-back -back massacres in 2009. 2012, 2014, in 18, in 19, in 2021, and today. I don't think no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the amount of massacres that occurred in Haifa alone in 1947 and 1948. The Abu Shusha massacre, Deir Yassin massacre. Ariel. Sharon, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala curse him, led back-to-back -back massacres in the 50s. Khan Yunus, Kufur Qasim, Sabra and Shatila. Constant massacres and genocides. Constant confiscations of Muslim lands for the 80 years. Rape in violation of women by the Aqsa. 
and elsewhere, ongoing for the past eight years. Men, women, children are taken as prisoners daily. Families and towns are evacuated. Farms are destroyed. For 80 years, families are evicted and their houses are constantly being leveled. Livelihood destroyed. For 80 years, they've been denied the basic necessities of life. That's been going on for 80 years nonstop. The Shari Fiqh term for defending oneself is called Jihad al-Dafa, defensive jihad. The Jews of the Qibla, the Murji'a rejects, think the Ummah <laughs> needs the permission of one of their tawaghit to defend themselves from occupiers. That's the principle they have. They made everything about their rulers. A genocide in Gaza won't trigger them, but a word about their leaders will. Leaders who brought the filthy tarfih, the entertainments and concerts into Bilad al Haramain while the people of Gaza were being massacred. They replaced the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and beloyal the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave permission for those transgressed and to defend themselves. They don't need the permission of any filthy ruler in the UAE or the filthy rulers in Bilad al Haramain or any other ruler for that matter. Allah gave permission to defend oneself. This verse is in the context of self-defense. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives permission, you don't need the permission of anyone else. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala said about this self-defense jihad, فَلَا يُشْتَرَطُ لَهُ شَرْطُ They falsely claim to follow Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab when his grandson, Abdurrahman ibn Hassan, had the most firm, solid statements Refuting this claim of theirs. Just like Ibn Hazm and many other ulama. Some of the Jews of the Qibla began to join in with the liberals and allege such verses are specific to the Messenger. And that's because they lack the basic ABCs of tafsir. 57 Muslim countries, 22 Arabic ones, surrounded Palestine. Some literally a stone's throw away. Nearly a half a billion Arab soldiers surrounding the enemies with billions spent on them. And they can't mobilize to stop a genocide or nourish the thirsty, innocent throats of our children from the Nile that's owned by Muslims just a few kilometers away. What have the rulers done but protect the borders and interests of the enemies? Establish pure Sharia in Gaza today and watch 86 countries mobilize and invade it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends ibtilaat and among their wisdoms is to expose the munafiqeen. Ma kan Allahu liyadhara al-mu'minina ala ma antum alayh. They want the Ummah to seek permission to defend themselves from leaders who are publicly indulgent in normalization with the enemy himself. And that's what's over the table. What's been going on under the table is, is much worse. But don't forget Talk about the good our leaders do. They've expanded the Masjid al Nabawi. They've expanded the Masjid al Haram. They're putting Qurans and printing them. They're making Hajj easier. Little do they know that saving the precious life of one child in Palestine, or one child, or one woman, or man in Yemen, or in Iraq, or elsewhere, 
is uncomparably more important than the expansion of the physical structure of the Haram all the way down to China. The Kaaba being destroyed and the earth along with it is less significant before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the killing of a single child in Gaza. The killing of a believer is more grievous before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the extinction of the whole world. When Quraysh make the same arguments the Jews of the Qibla make today, we're providing for the pilgrims. We're giving them water. We're maintaining the haram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rebuked them. أَجَعَلْتُمْ سِقَايَةَ الْحَاجِّ وَعِمَارَةَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ كَمَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَجَاهَدَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ لَا يَسْتَوُونَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْبَ الظَّالِمِينَ Don't you ever compare providing water to the pilgrims and managing the haram to those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last day and do jihad in the path of Allah wherever they are, wherever they may be. Just so you understand, normalization with the Yahud means recognizing the occupier state of Israel and their sovereignty. It's recognizing that the occupiers in Palestine have the right to exist on the occupied Muslim lands over the Muslim bodies. Normalization with the Yahud in a nutshell is wala to the occupying kuffar. Don't ever compare this treason and betrayal of those filthy leaders to any treaty that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had. And I've spoken about that in series and in detail in the past. Hardships like this purify the ranks. They expose the munafiqeen and they teach lessons. Lessons that really should be obvious.